Biology is the only subject where multiplication is the same as division. Stay tuned to discover this fascinating field one video at a time. It has been months since I last talked about beam therapeutics and there are a couple of new developments. This video will serve as an update, but before I continue, please note that I do hold a small position in this company and that has not changed since my previous video. First, let's look at the news. It looks like ARK Invest is really interested in the company with an institution ownership in Q4 of 2020. That is in addition to purchasing Beam Therapeutics shares for its ARC Innovation and ARC Genomics ETFs. Strangely, the ARC Innovation ETF holds more shares of Beam Therapeutics than ARC Genomics ETF. Next, a report has been recently released for FY 2020. Even though I'm not a financial analyst, I'm pretty intrigued by the small and growing revenue. After a little digging, it appears to have come from Verve Therapeutics, a private biotech company that's paying to use the base editing technology on familial hypercholesterolemia. Incidentally, I've talked about this disease before, which I'll link you to with the i button appearing above. This is the first of its kind for Beam Therapeutics and I hope to see this revenue continue to grow in the future. It's like passive income. Develop once, lease it out to others, and collect royalties. Finally, I have to address the elephant in the room, which is the acquisition of Guide Therapeutics. That is the topic of today's video. And if you stay till the end, I'll share with you my thoughts. But first, the sign. Before I start, if you like a quick refresher of what Beam Therapeutics does, you can click on the i button appearing above right now. With Beam Therapeutics gene editing technology ready to make a difference in patients' lives, they have to be introduced to the target cells for it to work. This can occur in a variety of ways. It can be via electroporation, the use of liquid nanoparticles, and adenoviruses. I will talk about the first two in this video. Electroporation, as the name implies, is sending an electric current to a suspension of target cells. This electric shock makes the cells competent. This means the cell membrane artificially opens a temporary pore through which the gene editing complex can use to enter into the cell. Since human cells are not naturally competent, this step has to be done in order to bring the complex in. Immediately, there are some disadvantages. One has to retrieve the target cells first, treat it, and then reintroduce it back into the patient. That is a lot of expertise labor involved. Also, not all cells are amenable to this kind of manipulation. For example, cells from solid organs like liver cannot be taken out and reintroduced back easily. But electroporation is perfect for red blood cells. This is because they originate and develop in the bone marrow. So, these cells can be removed and then reintroduced. Since the bone marrow is well compartmentalized, the environment is unchanged. As the red blood cells reach maturity and leave the bone marrow, they enter into the circulation where they start affecting their biological function. The advantage of this technique is that specific cells are isolated from the patient, and hence gene editing is very targeted. So this is unlikely to affect other cells of the patients. And I expect the clinical trials on sickle cell disease patients to complete uneventfully. This is also why it is the safest clinical trial to start for gene editing Therapies. Before we continue, the electroporation method is also known as the ex vivo delivery of gene editing technology. This is because cells are removed from the patient, manipulated, and reintroduced back in. But of course, not all gene editing therapies can be delivered via the ex vivo method. If the cells originate from solid organs, then the in vivo delivery method is preferred instead. This is where the gene editing technology is carried by a vehicle, which is then introduced into the patient, that seeks out the target cells, and finally fuses into them, introducing the payload. Frequently, the vehicle comes in the form of a lipid nanoparticle. The outer shell of the LMP is understandably made up of lipids, and this would be the phospholipid molecules found on the cell membranes. In addition, there may be artificial lipid moieties added onto it. This can come in the form of N-acetyl-D-galactosamine, <laughs> my god, which will allow the LMP to target liver cells better. Or, polyethylene glycol, which increases the success of the payload entering into the cytosol. And what's exciting is that these LMPs have been used in vaccines worldwide on a large scale, showing short-term safety. This may point to an increased likelihood of the Beam Therapeutics gene editing therapies using LMPs succeeding in clinical trials. And in addition, the recent acquisition of Guide Therapeutics takes it up to the next level. Let me explain. Guide Therapeutics have focused on developing an improved version of LMP, 
where each type of LMP they produce are tagged with a unique DNA barcode. Each DNA barcode is a unique sequence of bases. So, after LMPs are introduced into the patient, some of the target cells can be recovered to look at the presence of the DNA barcodes that have successfully made it into the cytosol. And by doing that, one can derive whether the therapy have reached the target cells and even how much of it have reached inside. And the moonshot idea is to be able to combine different therapies in one go then measure whether there is successful uptake. This would for the first time be a potential solution for polygenic diseases like cancer. Wow! And when Bean Therapeutics acquired the company, they now have an accelerated path to find the best LMP molecule for the genetic disease they are targeting, as well as an additional information during clinical trials to show efficacy. And finally, an integrated solution which is end-to-end -end from the gene editing technology all the way to delivery. Wow! So how does this compare to the other competitors? CRISPR Therapeutics and the Lice also have the same problem of delivering the therapies to the target cells, and they have to use off-the-shelf solutions from companies like Maxite instead. In contrast, Beam Therapeutics has its own in-house solution right now, and this can produce a cost advantage. Not only that, Guide Therapeutics have the ability to produce a lot more information which is useful for drug development as well as clinical trials. If any of the other competitors wants a piece of that, licensing fees please! Beam Therapeutics, as you can see, is working on future proving. Keep it up! Not only that, remember that I talked about the recovery of the DNA barcodes from the cells that have received the LMPs? Guess what technology is used to sequence the short DNA barcodes? Illumina once again! I'm very happy to have the two companies in my biotech stock portfolio. For the Watch TV and Gang, I hope you have developed an excitement as I have for the acquisition of Guide Therapeutics. In the next video, I'm going to look at the other Gen 2 competitors who are also doing base editing to see if they post a threat. If you'd like to see me talking about my other favourite biotech company, Illumina, you can click right here and I'll see you there shortly.